Hi, welcome to another episode of the Dear to Me Knits podcast. My name is Dearani. You can find me uh, pretty much everywhere online as Dear to Me Knits. Um, we have a, ra- a wabble revelry group uh, called the Dear to Me Knits podcast. And yeah, um, I am super out of practice. So uh, if you are watching for the first time, this might seem like a really crappy episode. And I'm really sorry. I'm normally with it um, just ever so slightly more. But um, I did take a break. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, there has been a lot of discussion lately in the fiber community, fiber arts community um, surrounding racism and other um, forms of um, discrimination against different um, different people of um, diversity. And uh, so I took a step back. Um, briefly to um, allow those voices to to come to the forefront and not try and um, take away from the discussion that needed to be had and uh, so I I feel like it might be a little soon to hop back into this but I've had a lot of people ask me um, when I was going to start recording again so I decided to um, to record an episode today so um, it is Tuesday the 4th of February. Um, I think, I know the 8th is Friday because that's my birthday. Woo woo! Um, I'll be 31 years old, yay. Um, but anyway, um, yeah. I want to state at the top of this episode, and if this sounds a little blunt, I do not apologize. Uh, if you do not believe that the conversation surrounding race right now needs to be happening, um, yeah, you're, you're not gonna like, um, being in this space from now on because I'm not going to be quiet about it. Um, and I'm not going, I'm not looking to, um, to make myself the center of it. I'm not trying to get attention, but um, if there's something that needs to be said or attention that needs to be drawn to an issue, uh, you can count on me to do that. And um, if you have a problem with that, then you're you're not gonna like being around in this space from now on. Um, Obviously, inclusion has been and will continue to be something that I've been striving for. Um, So, I tried to, I've been trying to get um, a sign language interpreter uh, back for um, my deaf and hard of hearing viewers um, and to attract deaf and hard of hearing viewers so that they have a place, you know, like a podcast that they can go to and uh, and feel included. Um, It's not happening. It's it's been a struggle. So I think my next step is I know that I can go in and um, like edit the closed captions on my own. Um, So I'm going to try to do that. But that still, to me, it's not the best option because American Sign Language is not the same as English, just like spoken word English. It's not. Yeah, it, there's a completely different sentence structure. Uh, it's definitely closer, I think, to um, to like Italian or Spanish or French or uh, like you wouldn't say a blue car. You would say a car blue and just all kinds of different things. So it's not the most accessible for those people, and I really, I really hate that. But um, something is better than nothing. So I am going to start going from back to my very first episode, going in and, um, and trying to get the closed captions as close to what I'm saying as possible. So, um, that is something that I'm, um, going to begin doing, uh, for that. And, um, 
yeah, um, I haven't had a problem with this, but I feel like um, since I'm on this topic of inclusion and diversity right now, um, I do have some people in my knitting world who are non-binary, which means that they do not identify a specific gender. Um, it is absolutely imperative that you use their chosen name, that you use their chosen pronoun. If that's going to be a problem for you, you're just going to have to, you're going to have to go. Uh, I cannot stress to you enough, like, you're not going to have a good time in this space if you're not willing to, to keep up. So, um, yeah, that's something that I wanted to get off my chest right at the top of the episode, um, just so that everybody is clear what I'm about and, uh, and we can move forward, hopefully, peacefully and inclusively and, um, and make our knitting community stronger and, um, bring everybody together. Um, and so, you know, if we do all this, then we can get back to, you know, peacefully, blissfully knitting and whatever. But there's work to do right now. There's been work to do, but we're finally getting around to it. So, um, so yeah, besides that, over my break, I decided to come down with like one of the worst sicknesses that I've ever had. And it kind of started with my husband and then went to me and then went to the baby and kind of trickled its way through the big kids. And so, yeah, I did a lot of sleeping and <coughs> a lot of coughing, which I still have. So I really apologize for that. That's super not fun to watch, I'm sure. But uh, yeah, so I didn't get as much knitting done as I wanted to. Uh, because first I was sick and the family was sick for like a week. So basically I was just like either being sick myself or on like taking care of sick people duty. Um, and then of course the week after that, the house was a disaster because everybody was being busy being sick for a week. So nobody cleaned anything. So I got the house caught back up ish and, <laughs> uh, I've been trying to get back in the swing of everything, but um, I also uh, had some, like, well, okay, so I'll just get into whips, because that's the easiest way to explain it, like, as I go, instead of making you, like, an outline and then going back to the beginning. That's, which I do a lot. I don't know, like, I think I need to organize my thoughts before I can present them to you, but I should do that before I start recording. <laughs> So that I'm all ready to go. <laughs> oh, anyways. Okay, so, um, I'll start with whips. Uh, this whip you've seen before. No, I'll start with finished objects. What am I doing? Okay, so, um, my other whips that I had shown you kind of came to a, like, f like full stop. Like, I stopped knitting everything except socks because I had my kids dye um, these sock blanks. I think I showed maybe last time, maybe the time before, I can't remember. But um, so we dyed those and it was super fun and super cute. Um, so then as soon as they dried, the kids were like, okay, make socks now. And I was like, ah, okay. So <laughs> the, the first one that we did was um, the two-year-old helped dye. Uh, so he could only reach one section of the blank, so I let him go to town, and then I just used what all, all like, the rest of the die and put stripes on the end that he couldn't get to on the table. So, um, those ended up being, uh, for my husband because of the colors that he picked, which are these. So there's brown and yellow and green and red. Uh, so obviously this is where I put the stripes on and then this is how the section knit up that my toddler did and I did a heel flap and gusset uh, These are totally dirty. So Sorry all the socks that I'm gonna show you are dirty socks. <laughs> Yay 
Um, yeah, totally pulled these out of the laundry hamper. I need to wash them. But, so yeah, I thought that these knitted up super cute. I really like, I don't, I feel like if it were different colors, it would kind of remind me of like an ice cream sundae for some reason, or like a banana split. The yellow, the yellow and brown and red have like definite banana split vibes for me for some reason. So I really like those. Really, really like them. And my husband likes them and they fit him great. Uh, I really like a heel flap and gusset for him. He has a pair of socks with a afterthought heel and it's super baggy uh, right in the, on his instep. So uh, I like a heel flap and gusset for him. Um, I tried to find the toddler socks. Who knows where they are? He don't, he'll only keep them on for like five or ten minutes before he rips them off, which is how he does all socks, so. I don't take it personally. That's just how he is. But uh, so one of the twins um, dyed a blank and he used um, turquoise and green and yellow and golden yellow, which kind of comes out like <coughs> um, yellowish orange or orangish yellow, however you want to put it. So these are how his socks turned out. And I thought it was really cool how it kind of gradiates. That was not, not on purpose, like a little, even a little bit, not on purpose at all. I did a German short row heel on these. That seems to fit the boys really well. Um, and also I did these toe up. So um, I wanted to use, well, I didn't want to use the whole thing because I used the rest of this blank to knit um, the toddler's socks. But, um, yeah, I wanted to knit, like, exactly to 50 grams. So, this is, yeah, this is 50 grams. I'm going to be really sad when they get huge man feet and I can't knit them 50, 50 gram socks anymore. <laughs> this is going to be really sad. Um, but, yeah, so, uh, I think they turned out super cute. The, uh, the striping here um, is done... Whenever he just, I gave them med medicine syringes and cups of dye. So he would draw up the dye and the medicine syringe and then just squirt it kind of in the middle of the blank. And the blank is stockinette, uh, so it kind of curls on the edges. So the color didn't really get uh, on the edges very much. So there ended up being maybe like half an inch of white on either side, just like consistently through the whole blank. So, um, it kind of pooled into this micro striping situation here, which I think is really, really pretty. I love these very much. So yeah, so that is a pair of boy socks and my husband's socks. And then I can give, I'll, I'll post a picture, uh, that I took of, um, the toddler socks here. Um, and yeah, I just, I don't know where he has thrown them. They're somewhere in the house. <laughs> I'll find them eventually. Um, so, like I said, uh, like right after I recorded my last episode, I want to say, um, we dyed those. And so then just all knitting except for sock knitting came to a halt. Um, I have since put, oh, yeah, I'll show you. So, um, the socks that my daughter dyed while I'm, uh, and these are going much more slowly now because I've, uh, picked my sweaters back up. Um, this is, this is her blank. Um, and if you can, <coughs> goodness, I'm so sorry. I'm like the most professional guys. Um. She only used four colors, but the way that she, um, you know, overlapped them, there's, uh, you know, like there's some really cool purple happening and, um, yeah, some greens. She didn't use green. It just came out on its own. So, um, yeah, I think it's really cool. Um, and once again, um, you can see... 
there is this just like half an inch of white almost consistently up the whole blank um, and what that is doing is micro striping so that it stripes like that so um, hers isn't quite as obvious there I think there was quite a bit more white on the edges of um, of the boys but um, yeah I think it's super cute it reminds me of like um, a cake and sprinkles or like Lisa Frank the colors in this are amazing like it's so much fun because it since since the spots are so small the color changes are super fast so every couple of inches you've got a whole new uh, like colorway look a, like just a, a tiny little section and you're like oh I want a whole skein and just these colors and you knit a couple more stitches and it scoots down a little bit like oh I want a whole skein and just those colors <laughs> so like this right here is like you know pink and blue so then you'd knit out of the pink and get into like, oh, look at that. Oh, like, all oh, the blue and green. Oh, my gosh. And then you scoot down some more. And it's like, oh. It's just, I don't, I love it. I, it's like, it's like potato chips. But so these um, I cast on at the cuff. And I swear I ate lunch, but I don't know. Maybe I drank too much coffee. I am feeling like jittery. Um... Yeah, which that's another thing, like while I was sick, I didn't drink that much coffee. So now I'm trying to get back into my regular routine and my body is like, you drink a lot of coffee. It's like, slow down. We're freaking out. So, <laughs> yeah, I probably should have eased back into that, but I like coffee. So, um, so yeah, I did a hill flop and gusset on hers. Oh, come on. And, uh. Now I'm just doing the gusset decreases there and yeah, two at a time. So, uh, yeah, just been chipping away at those. Those are kind of, um, <coughs> nap time and car knitting right now. Um, so they'll get done probably before next episode. Um, the other thing I've been working on is my Weekender sweater. And, um, I was taking this really, really slow, uh, because Mariah, my friend Mariah was supposed to <laughs> knit one with me. Uh, and she did, she cast on for, for one of the hems, the, I think it's the back hem. She cast on her back hem, but she hasn't done her front hem yet. And I was like... I can't go any slower. I have to work on this sweater. <laughs> so, um, like, I've been watching a lot of Netflix lately, and I was like, okay, I'm sick of knitting socks. I want to, or what, well, what really happened was I got to the heel on that sock, and I was like, I can't knit this heel and watch TV at the same time. So, uh, so I got this out, and I've been working on it again. So, um, yeah, there's the split for the hem right there. And actually, I had, uh, after I showed it on last episode, um, I was really worried that it was going to be too small. So, I, um, I joined the hems, which I don't think I had done last time. Joined the hems and worked just a little bit and then, um, slipped half the stitches onto a second needle and tried it on. And, uh, there, there was positive ease, but it was like not that much positive ease. And I was like, it might be okay, but I feel like if I go up one size, it'll be better. So I ripped that out and recast on, um, so now I'm knitting, oh gosh, I think it's, the medium size there's like extra small small and medium I think I'm knitting the medium size but I totally could be wrong um 
I want to say it was like 99 stitches to cast on. I can't even remember. But, um, yeah. So, um, this is out of Sweet Skein of Mine. Uh, worsted in the... Ooh, I have a skein right here. Uh, Sweet Skein of Mine worsted in the Vintage Love Letter colorway. She's rebranded since then, so this is not what her labels look like now. Um, and I have one, but I'm not going to get it. Um, but yeah, so I am not alternating skeins, um, cause I'm lazy and it doesn't seem to be making a difference. So yeah. Oh, and I've been showing you the wrong side the whole time cause it's reverse stockinette. So it's knit inside out. So I will show you the right side so that you can get an idea of what it's going to look like when it's actually done. So there's the slip stitch detail down the front and it still looks really little, but that's because it's on the needles. It's, it's plenty big. I tried it on just to make sure. So, um, yeah, I'm really excited to get this done and I really want to get it done before it stops being cold enough to wear it. Cause I would be really sad if I finished it. I did that with my comfort fake cardi last year. I got to wear it just a small handful of times before it was too, uh, too hot to wear it. <laughs> and so I was like, all summer long, I was like, when can I wear my comfort fake cardi? So, yeah, I definitely want to finish this while I can still wear it. So hopefully I can uh, get a lot done on that while I'm watching TV in the evenings. So yes, this has been on the couch, seeing some progress. I have been watching, well, um, I started off watching, there was a new show that came out on Netflix called Sex Education, and it is so good. I love it. I love that show a lot. And so I've watched all of the episodes they have in like two days <laughs> I'm like this is so sad now I can't watch it anymore <laughs> so um yeah so about that time um there started being some lists posted on Instagram like things that you should watch to for like um anti-racism education and like just to, to learn and that kind of thing. So I've been, um, I have an app that shows you, um, like you can plug in, like I have Netflix, I have Hulu, I have Amazon Prime, whatever, Prime Movies or I can't remember what it's called. Anyway, like all that, you can plug in what you have and, uh, and then type in a movie or a show and it'll go through all of the things that you, <clears throat> all the websites that you check and tell you um, where you can watch shows. So I've been taking those lists that I pull off uh, Instagram and just plugging in everything and queuing uh, everything that I can find um, from those lists. So um, that's what I'm going to start doing is going through those. Um, so I'm really... Uh, looking forward to doing that. Um, I haven't been knitting on this as much because it is taking, it takes a lot of attention right now and my, yeah, my brain is just like super fuzzy and I've been zoning out to Netflix a lot more than usual. I don't usually watch that much television. Uh, or podcasts or anything. I, well, I watch podcasts like while I fold laundry and stuff and do dishes. But um, yeah, lately I've been watching a lot more Netflix than usual. So uh, complicated knitting is kind of um, tough to do. So I frogged my Birkin sweater. I finished the yoke and tried it on and it was so, so tight. Um, like when I tried it on, the yoke was so tight that I had to like yank it down over my shoulders and then the neckline was like all loose and like 
flapping around and stuff. It looked so bad. And I was like, I did not like knitting this. I don't want to re-knit this. And so I'm not going to. <laughs> so I, I just frogged it all and decided to cast on a different color work yoke. Um, and I'm hoping and praying that I don't have the same problem with this one. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Um, so this is the, doo -doo -doo. this is the, um, Sinister Cat Digin pattern by Uncotton Yog. And I am knitting this out of my, this is, the white is, um, Barrett Woolco, um, here I have a, I don't have all of my tags anymore, but I have them. Uh, Barrett Woolco, Wisconsin Woolen Spun. Uh, it's a fingering weight, um, 100% American Wool, uh, in the colorway oats. And the... Um, the blue and yellow, navy blue and yellow, are, um, <coughs> <coughs> goodness sakes, guys, I am so sorry, are Phenol Garn Rama PT2, uh, which is also a fingering weight, <coughs> Norwegian wool yarn, um, and I don't know the, um, the numbers of the colors, but it's like a, a golden brownish yellow and a navy blue. Um, and I am doing it as a pullover. Um, so she gives you instructions in the cardigan pattern on how to um, convert it to be a pullover. So that is what I am doing. Um, I was talking to a friend and she's like, cause you didn't want to steak again. And I was like, honestly, the steak isn't the part that I don't like. Like I'll, I can cut my knitting. I did it now I'm good. But I really don't like finishing steaks. Uh, so I'm just not doing a cardigan. I would probably get more wear out of it as a cardigan. But I just don't want to bother with it. So it's going to be a pullover. But um, I'm kind of excited because I decided when I cast this on, I've never done a fitted sweater. I've never done uh, waist shaping or anything like that. So I decided with this sweater that I'm going to um, do not like, not like negative ease, but like zero ease. Um, and have waist shaping and that kind of stuff, which should be interesting because I have like hips for decades. Like I have nothing, nothing, nothing. Boom. There's the hips and like no butt either, just like hips. So I look like 10 pounds heavier from the front than I do from the side because my hips are just like, ba bam. There you go. So, uh, so yeah, so I don't know if I'll be able to just follow the pattern or whether I'm going to have to try it on every inch or so to make sure that, that my hips are being properly accommodated. <laughs> but I'm super excited. I'm really loving this pattern. I feel like it's, um, it's laying nicely. Uh, my floats are doing good and everything. Um, there is some three color work at the top of the cats before you before you join their little bodies together um, and I am on the row where you introduce the second row of cats right now so super duper excited I love the neckline um here let's see if I can do it like this there are short rows to raise the back of the neck um so it's higher, but I like 
how it's going to be just a little bit wider. It's not going to be like right around here. Um, I don't like stuff, well, which I'm, I'm wearing a collared shirt, but if it were closed, like I would feel like I was choking. I don't like anything directly up on my neck. I like it to be a little bit roomy. So that's going to be really, really nice. And um, I, I'm super excited to the cat in the next room. I was like, what is going on? Uh, yeah, I'm super excited to see how this goes. Um, and it's a lot of fun to work on. Like even the, even the three, uh, the three color part that I absolutely hated on the Birkin, I, I, I was cool with it. So, uh, I'm super excited to, to keep chipping away at that. Um, and yeah, those are my whips. Um, no nipple tassels, because all three of them are new cast-ons from the last time we talked. Yeah, kind of. Um, my weekender. <laughs> my weekender is a re-cast-on. But, yeah. Um, there's that. Uh, I do have some acquisitions before anybody says anything I am on a yarn diet I ordered them before the last of the year and then they didn't arrive until after my last episode and then it's been like a month since I recorded that episode so they've just been sitting still in their packages like so do we get to be a part of the stash or what's going on so I'm going to show them to you and then put them away because I know you guys are so excited to see my butt. Let's do it. So, I ordered a grab bag from Casual Fashion Queen. This has been some yarn, like, I've always wanted some of her yarn. And there's no good reason why I couldn't buy it. I mean, I buy, I used to buy, used to buy, I'm better now. Um, <laughs> I used to buy like whatever my heart fancied. So there's no reason why I couldn't buy casual fashion queen instead of, you know, any other dyer that I bought from, but I didn't. So I don't know. Um, but she had a grab bag or it was like $25 and you get two skeins to just, mystery de-stashing skeins <coughs> and I was like sweet I want in on that action and actually somebody tagged me I I don't remember whether it was Mariah or somebody else but somebody tagged me so it's all their fault uh so I got these two skeins these are on her 8020 fingering base this one is called ruin and it's super pretty. It's got like um, this really pale pink and then um, white and then navy blue and burgundy speckles in there. Oh, it's a little bit of brown. I love this. I love this very much. These are these are very comfort zone-y colors for me. And then um, this goes with it. Like, like. I'm sure that she, um, yeah, like right there, those are almost the same color. Um, I'm sure that that is on purpose. Like she made them to go together. <coughs> <coughs> I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> this is called Winifred. I have a cousin named Winifred. She's a sweetheart. Um, but yeah, I love these, and I'm super excited she gave me complimentary skeins. You know, like, it could have been any two skeins, but she she was thoughtful and gave me two skeins that go together so I could do something together with them. I like them. So, now they are mine. I, I really, oh God, I don't know how... There's, mm, 
there is no, uh, <laughs> I can't, there's no way I can fit anything in there. <laughs> Just gonna have to. gonna have to go that way with them I'm incorrigible this is why I'm on a yarn diet all right and then um the lovely Shauna of Bean and Bam hand dyed uh yarn um was having a little sailly sale um and she does a lot of fandom colorways um and I love Guardians of the Galaxy my kids love Guardians of the Galaxy um, that's probably, besides Deadpool, probably, like, in my top favorite, uh, Marvel Universe movies. So, um, I bought some skeins from her, and she also was so sweet and sent me a skein of, um, DK Way yarn as a giveaway prize for, um, the make nine along from last year so that was sent off this morning so that should be arriving at its destination in a few days yay <coughs> um but yeah so this is star lord and it's so pretty i love it i love it so there's that one and then this one is beautiful. Uh, this is Gamora. Who is Star-Lord's love interest. And also just a badass chick. So this color, right? Like, I love... I thought about saving these to make Christmas socks. For myself because I just feel like um like it's not quite Christmas colors because this is definitely like fuchsia but it's still I don't know I just am loving it and the depth of this green is so I mean it's like really nice and saturated so awesome I love 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 and I love the little bit of black in there it's really nice. I'm spending a lot of time talking about this one. <laughs> it is my favorite that came. Although, this one is an extremely close second. She always sends a little cotton ball with some essential oil on it, so everything smells so good. I love it. Love it. Um, so this is like just a taupe base. I'm not sure if she dyed the taupe or if the yarn is naturally that taupe color. But it's also tweed, which I love tweed. Love it. I'm going to get on my knees so because I'm sitting like way far back from the camera. So I feel like I'm going to fall out of my chair trying to do a close-up of this yarn. So um, so it's a taupe base uh, with tweed, tweedy bits. And then there's um, the green in here. And this is uh, her Groot colorway and I love Groot oh he is such a cutie pie so there's some green in there I love it love it yeah you can see so the it must be dyed because um there's there's definitely some tonality to um to it but it's so pretty so pretty I kind of wish I had a sweater quantity of this because these colors are definitely and like it's just so subtle it would make such a pretty sweater such a pretty sweater <coughs> <coughs> my gosh guys um so yes I will just balance those up there And, uh, guess what? That's all I got. That's it. Um. Ooh, I don't know. 
See, if I had made, if I had written down my thoughts, I would have remembered the thing that I was going to say at the end of this. Oh, yeah, make nine along. Okay, so we are going to do the make nine along for this year. And I am working on my color work yoke. And also, I could check one off because I made some toddler socks. Oh, yay. Um, that was on my make nine, and now it is, it is chickity chipped. So, um, so yeah, so I'm chipping away at that color work yoke. Technically, I've knit a color work yoke already, if you want to count my Birkin, because I did finish the yoke. Um, it just did not fit, and I really did not care for it, so I frogged it. Um, yeah, so I think I started Chatter Thread in the, uh, Ravelry group. I'll go ahead and throw up some finished object threads, get your, uh, pictures in there, you know, get, get to chatting about your stuff, get entered, um, with your Make 9 or Ravelry Q if you don't, if you're, if you didn't do a Make 9. Um, but it's still early enough you could make one, but it doesn't matter. You can just do out of your Ravelry queue. I'm not going to be super strict about it. Um, but yeah, so, uh, there's going to be just the same as last year. There's going to be 150 grams or less and 150 grams or more or, you know, over 150 grams. And I will draw a winner from each of those groups and maybe one just from, the chatter thread this year. You know, we've got the whole year to prepare. So, and I'm going to be going to, hopefully going to Stitches West in August, which would be a good place to pick up some cool prizes. And, uh, yeah. Um, if you want to post about your um, finished objects or your progress or anything like that on social media, uh, you can do that with the hashtag Make nine along 2019, and uh, you can also use my ha uh, hashtag, which is hashtag dear to me knits, or you can tag me directly with the at. Uh, I do like the hashtag better uh, because it's harder to um, to miss things. Like I can go to my hashtag and see everything, versus if you at me, um, there you know, and I have like a bunch of notifications that day or whatever, then uh, it's likely to get buried and I would feel so sad if I missed it. So um, I do like the hashtag. And also it's fun because if you are tagging me continuously as you progress through a project, then I can see how it grows and that makes me happy. I like seeing the, uh, the process of things. So yeah. <coughs> um, I don't know if there's anything else that I wanted to say. For for not having podcasted for a month, I have like not that much. I'm discovering that uh, I relied quite a bit on my purchases to provide content for my podcast. So now I'm going to have to be actually interesting <laughs> and, and like come up with things to say. Or else my podcast episodes are going to start being like five, five minutes long. Just like little, little snippets. Start calling it the Dear To Me Knits Snippet Cast. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. <coughs> well, if you're as sick of listening to my coughing as I am actually coughing, then um, I think I'm going to wrap this sucker up. <laughs> and I will, oh, um, do not forget that on Mondays at 9 p.m. Eastern time, you can follow the link in my bio on Instagram through to the Zoom website slash app, and, uh, we have a live knit night, um, usually it's all, it's just the same people, but you know what, I would love to have some new faces join us, um, all of the faces are welcome, and, uh, and yeah, I hope you guys will all, um, all of you people will, will come and hang out and knit together and, or crochet, 
and uh, or spin or weave all the crafts all the faces all the people let's do it let's get all fibery together um and okay i think that truly is the last thing so i will talk to you all again very soon you're all very dear to me love you guys bye <laughs>